here in Petra, which is part of the land of the biblical Edomites, the sons of Esau. And if you remember, Esau was also called Edom, um, and it means red because he was a redhead. Interestingly, Petra is also full of these beautiful red rock formations. Uh, the Nabataeans ruled here uh, for hundreds of years and they built these uh, great big tombs. And um, it's a beautiful place, amazing to explore. But um, it just brought a deeper meaning to me to see what this land is like of when Obadiah is prophesying against the Edomites. Because when, when Judah went into exile in 586 BC, the Edomites, who were also um, were sons of Esau, and so um, related, um, distantly, but still related to the Jews, um, they didn't help them. They weren't even grieving for them or with them. They were actually kind of rejoicing and jeering. And so the book of Obadiah is a prophecy against Edom saying, uh, because of your pride, because you didn't grieve or help your brothers, because you jeered at them and celebrated them going into exile, you too will be destroyed. And it talks about how um, you take comfort in your rocks, in your hiding places in the rocks. Um, but those aren't going to protect you when the time of destruction comes. And those verses just mean a lot more being here and seeing these rocky area and the places where they could have hid it, hidden and uh, all the strength that they had in these hiding places in the rocks. Just a beautiful place though. Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukok Radash, double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yasharalam who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as, and still are, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the true identity of the biblical nation of Edom and how it falls upon the Caucasian race. But before we get into that, let's read this. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Now, this is a future prophecy spoken about in Isaiah, uh, talking about how the Lord in the end times would basically reveal the true biblical, biblical identities of all the nations upon the world. Now, right here, you can see uh, the table of nations, which is described in Genesis 10. Right? It talks about the 18 nations which the Lord recognizes and from which the 195 nations that the UN recognizes come from. Now, the nation that we're going to focus on today in this lesson is the nation here listed as number two, the nation of Edom, right? Which when you get into history, which is what we're going to, you know, do a bit of today, you're going to see that it is the Caucasian race that uh, is basically the descendants of the nation of Edom, or as you say it in Hebrew, Adawam, right? Now, like that video of that man, it was kind of spiritual because not only was, uh, let's see, not only, you know, is he what appears to be a Caucasian, right? Because who knows? You know, he may be a tear, right? He may be an Israelite, but, you know, we're just going to take it on face value, you know? Uh, he looks like a Caucasian, right? And he's wearing red, right? But today, today's world, 
would refer to this man as a white man. Now, uh, he's not white, right? The, this border here on YouTube, that's white. This man resembles more his uh, shirt than he does his teeth, for example, right? Or this white border, right? So when he said Esau or Edom's name was given to him like that because his hair was red, he was a redhead, that's false, right? Uh, he was uh, called Edom because he had uh, basically uh, eaten the, the raw meat, right? The, the bloody stew that uh, he sold his birthright for. In fact, let's go and read that now. That can be found in Genesis 25 and 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, and for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Right? And this is ultimately because when you get into pottage, that's a that's a stew that has meat in it, right? And uh, so, you know, later on, it's, you know, it's mentioned that it was a lentil, like a lentil type pottage. So basically uh, it, it was um, still raw, right? And it was still had meat in it. So, so, and this is all spiritual, like indications of, of Esau, right? Cause he loves blood, right? This is why when you look at modern day Edomites, they have this weird characteristic about them that they love raw meat right this is where you get beef tartare from which is basically raw meat or hamburger meat you know um, chopped up with other you know things like egg uh, egg yolk or you know onions things like that you also see some other Edomites just straight up eating raw steaks or even blood right now it's again these are just characteristics uh, that follow the nation of Edom just like other characteristics follow us Israelites, right? Well, that's where that comes from, right? And also, like this man said, right? Um, he said how he was a redhead, but no, there was another thing that um, that the Bible referred to is that Esau not only you know did he lust after me, uh, blood, but he also came out of the womb. Red at red, right? Let's read that, and that can be found in Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, right? Now, Esau ultimately, when you get into the Hebrew word, it means wasted away, right? And the reason is, is because when Esau was born, he looked like this, right? And you got to understand that at that time, all the the everybody basically on the scene was a person of color right a so-called you know so-called negroes right they were all dark copper color now when this baby had come out esau he looked like this right he was red right because he had just come out of that embryo sack right he had gone through a traumatic you know event of going through the birth canal and everything and just like this baby here, man, he was red as hell, you know? So, so that's why the Bible refers to that as, as, or refers to Esau coming out red, okay? Because, and it didn't mention anything about Jacob because again, the, uh, it didn't have to because Jacob was the normal color, right? Now, when you get into, uh, who the red people truly are today, right? When you look at these Edomites, man, you know, off the bat, like when you look at this guy here, right? You know, he's a very light shade of pink, right? For the most part, right? And when they, uh, when these Edomites uh, get sunburned, right? Then, you know, you could see it plainly, man, that they are literally red people, okay? This is where, you know, where Esau gets this, man, because one thing, is this is a curse upon them, man. This is the curse of leprosy, clean leprosy. And where does this come from? Well, it comes from back when the Lord um, basically uh, uh, cursed Cain. You see, uh, when the Lord cursed Cain, 
for killing his brother Abel, what happened is that the Lord marked him, right? And how did he mark him? He removed all his pigment, right? Just kind of like when you when uh, you see people who have what's known as vitiligo today, where basically they have um, blotches of just white skin amongst their black, you know, black skin. That's basically what the Lord did, but all over the body of these of Cain, right? Well, the descendants of Cain had similar features as this. And what happened when Cain came back, you know, after he died and he was reborn again through reincarnation, right? He came back as Esau, okay? And when Esau, he had, because he had that spiritual mark upon him in his previous life, the Lord made sure that he had it when he came out as Esau, man. And these people who you would know today as the so-called white people, which they are not white, or Caucasians, right? you understand this is that they are the red people now let's go ahead and get into that right see the red people of the world are who the bible refers to as the devils right those these are the devils that the bible actually speaks of right no it's not no you know fully red guy in a red suit with a pointy pointy tail and horns no, it's your average Caucasian male, right? Those these guys who own all the banks, own all the uh, corporations for the most part, the ones who are um, in charge of all countries, you know, all the Westernized countries that is, and and basically they they, they rule here in America, right? And when I say Caucasians, I'm also talking about the so-called Jewish people who are in the land of Israel, because again. Though they pretend like they're different, they pretend that they're hated by the KKK, it's, they're just playing the victim. They're the same type of people, right? They just have different religious beliefs, religions that they actually have made up. Now, there's many books that they themselves have written, right? One of the more popular books, which at one time was going for over $1,000, was this book right here. Who is Esau Edom by Charles A. Weissman, right? Now, this book basically, you know, states it very clearly that Esau is the uh, modern-day uh, Edomites, or I'm sorry, the modern-day Caucasian race. Now, the thing about them is, is uh, and, and namely, the, the so-called Israelis, right, or the so-called Jewish people, right? Because you see, one thing about Esau is that that he is not only did he inherit that trait that he would be a fugitive and a and a, and a vagabond um but uh he also he in any hides from the from the world right his true identity that is but he would also try to hide amongst his own people right because you see you have what's known as your your american or your westernized Caucasian and then you got your Jewish Caucasians right and the funny thing is is that both groups point at each other as being Esau Edom okay but the funny thing is is that they're both Edomites okay now from this book we're gonna read a couple of passages real quick <clears throat> right this is on uh, page 7 we're gonna go down here where it talks about when the uh, Edomites were first converted to the ways of of, of um, Judaism, right? And and this time it wasn't really the Judaism, you know. Today, basically, was they were basically taught the laws and statutes of the time by uh, John Hyrcanus, right? One of the Maccabean brothers. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, just just read this, right? Uh, let's see. Actually, let's read this, right? It says, The Nebataeans, which are basically Ishmaelites, who Esau basically married into, by the way, and who basically kind of took over Petra eventually, um, with Esau in charge there, by the way. Uh, it says, The Nebataeans now occupied Mount Seir, and the Edomites were driven into the old territory of Judah. The Maccabean family, a remnant of the true Judites, had ruled Judea, from 166 to 37 BC, and under Ju uh, Judas Maccabee, 
uh, First Maccabees 5 and 3, recaptured the city of Hebron from the Edomites in 164 BC. During the time of John Hyrcanus, uh, 135 to 105 BC, the nephew of Judas, the Judites were again forced faced with hostilities by the Idumeans. Right? And Idumeans is basically just another a way of saying the nation of Edom. Hyrcanus confronted the Edomites, causing a decisive change in the relations between the two factions. John, Har John Hyrcanus conquered the whole, whole of Edom and undertook the, to, the forced conversion of its inhabitants to Judaism from the Josephus, um, um, from the book of Josephus, uh, I think it's book 8, chapter 9, verse 1. Thenceforth, the Edomites became a section of the Jewish people, right? And this is only a small amount of these people. It says, thus the juncture of the time, the Edomites were then incorporated with the Jewish nation, and their country was called by the Greeks and the Romans, Idumia. So, you see that? So... And you got to understand too that uh, during this time, uh, you also had uh, the the um, the Edomites, right? Not only were they still here in the land of of the Levant, right, the, the middle, so-called Middle East, but you also had Edomites amongst the Greeks, right, Alexander the Great, and all them, and also the Romans, right? Because you see, Esau. E, or excuse me, Edom was spreading themselves, right? And they were uh, spread into almost every country of power and they were rising in power in those countries, right? Now, let's go, um, go down here and let's read this part here. This basically straight out points the, the finger at the modern day Israelis as <laughs> being the Edomites, right? It says the Khazars were a nomadic uh, people who had no traces to Hebraic culture. They had been following a pagan sex-oriented religion until they had officially embraced Judaism in 740 AD, right? That's when you hear about the story of Kagan Bulan, who was like the king of the Khazars at that time. Uh, you see, what happened is around, let's actually go here to the biblical timeline. Around, uh, so around 96 AD, you had a Roman emperor by the name of Nerva, right? And he, for the most part, was the first so-called black emperor. Now he was simply put into power because he was considered a safe choice. He had no kids and he ruled for a little bit over a year, right? It says here 15 months before dying of natural deaths, right? He was put into power uh, by other Edomite, um, you know, senators who, who uh, basically didn't want the, the, the throne going to other Edomites at the time. Well, for, you know, from then started a, a whole change in the Roman Empire. And you eventually got uh, this man here, Septimius Severus, which basically is means cutter of the seven, right? Seven being the, the seven emperors that this man conquered. Now he was, as you can see here in the image, a so-called, you know, Negro, right? He was a Jake, right? And he had, you know, obviously mixed children with his wife and everything. And this was in 193 AD. Later on, you know, going down, and, and at that this point here from Septimius Severus, it was pretty much just all the emperors were so-called Negroes, right? Now, eventually, the, the big pivotal point was uh, when Constantine the Great came into power, right? Another so-called Negro, uh, you know, came into power in 1313 AD, right? He, um, oh, I'm sorry, he came in before that, but at this point, he had changed Rome from being a pagan country to, you know, following uh, the, you know, basically converting and, and, and following Christ, right? So-called Christ. Right? And he also established the Vatican at the, you know, on this year. He created the land and everything, and they set up this whole system. Now, at this point, the Roman Empire of the Edomites had, for the most part, you know, 
was done, right? There were still Edomites that were dwelling in that land, but for the most part, it was party over for them, right? JK had taken over, and eventually what happened is that the Edomites that were still left in Rome, for the most part, had no real power there. Right? They had basically all fled, right? They had fled from 400 AD, right? Even a little bit before that, I'm sure, all the way to about 900 AD. There is recorded history of the nation of Edom, right? The pagan Romans fleeing up into the Caucasian or the Caucasus mountains, right? And they stayed there. They stayed there for about a thousand years. And they didn't emerge until about 1200, uh, you know, 1200 to 1300. AD. Now, uh, the thing is, is so they, they stayed there for about, like I said, a thousand years. Now, this area here, when you understand the Caucasus Mountains, up here is where Khazaria would eventually be because you see the so called Israelis, right, who were at that time, they were referring to themselves as Khazars and later on they would call themselves the Ashkenazi, right? They basically were, they, never really left the area they, they came here and they even went through the uh, conquering by the, uh, the the Mongolian you know nation right the Huns and this is where you where a lot of them get their uh, the, their uh, terms like Kagan and they get their you know um, Ashkenazi names from they actually married it to a lot of the a, a lot of the um, Japhite tribes, right? Namely Ashkenazi bloodline. And this is where they get the Ashkenazi uh, um, name from, right? Because one thing that these Edomites do is that they'll always take the identity and the culture of other nations, right? This is why they call white people culture vultures, right? Because they are hiding from their own identity. Because why? Well, these Edomites have a lot to pay for, right? And they don't want to be tied to their original names. Now let's continue back in here. It says, while rejecting Christianity and Muhammadism, which is basically Islam, at that was what it was referred to at that time, the Jewish author and historian Arthur Kosler also concluded that the majority of East European Jews and hence the world jewelry, right, the basically all the Israelis of the world, is of Khazar and not of Semitic origin, right? Now that's a little bit false because they actually are Semitic, right? Because they come from a line of Edom, right? Hence, they are Semitic. They're just uh, Hebrew Edomites, not Hebrew Israelites. In the beginning of his book states, the large majority of the surviving Jews of the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin, right? So this shows you that the Israelis today they are not the Jews of the Bible, man. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came out from the Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry, that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga. Volga being up there in the Caucasus Mountains, the Huns and all those people, right? The so-called Russians, which are also Edomites. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. And that genetically they are more closely related to the Huns, Uyghurs, and the Migers tribe than the seed of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Now this is where this author closer guy goes off a little bit, right? This is where he's basically tying these uh, Khazars, these Israelis, back to a, a Japhetic seed line, the, the Ashkenazi, which we all know that's false because they're basically the nation of Edom who basically slipped in with uh, the into the line of, of Ashkenaz, okay? But again, they're simply one, they're simply the head tribe of the nation of Edom, right? Now, there's another book written in 1858, The Roman Empire of the Empire, the Empire of the Edomites by William Beeston, right? And this book tells you right here, man, this is a crazy book when you read it, right? But it says, Idumians are the same people as the Edomites. You know, there you go. You know, can't make it more plain. This is Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, 
and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. So you see, it doesn't matter what identities these Edomites uh, are going to proclaim, saying, oh, their father's Italian, the, you know, my father's German, like Vocab Malone, who we all know is an Edomite, or right? an agent on top of that. But, um, or, you know, basically like that. These identities that, that these Edomites love to hold on to, they're not going to be be able to hide them, man. They're going to they're going to basically be all revealed, just like they're being revealed now, right? Because now we've had the internet given to us by the Lord, right? And also all the research and studying that our teachers have done, along with the studying and research that we have done, we have uncovered all your all these Edomites hiding places, man. We understand who the you know who they are, where they came from, how they hid you know whose bloodline they try to take over whose culture they try to assimilate right and why is this well because the lord had like it tells you man let's go and get it real quick this is a uh, second ezra's 6 and 19 and i will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. You see, because right now, now that the affliction of Zion, which is us, right? Zion basically means monument in Hebrew, right? Because the Negro Latino Native Americans, the Israelites, we are the monument of the Lord. We are the Lord's chosen people, right? And now that our punishment is coming to an end, the Lord now is making an inquisition of them. Well, who's them? Well, the Edomites, right? And let's look up that word inquisition. It says, uh, it says, uh, it says inquisition, the act of inquiring deeply or searchingly, right? A deep or searching inquiry, especially a ruthless, well, there you go. So, and that's what we're doing, right? The Lord has put it on our spirit to search out deeply the history, the truths of these Edomites, so much so that they can no longer hide themselves, right? And we understand why, right? Because it tells you right here in another Edomite publication, right? Why these Caucasians run from the notion of being Edomites, right? Even though it's their biblical, you know, you know, name, you know, now let's go find out why it is that these people are running from it. It says, uh, this is from the Compact Bible Dictionary. It says, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. You see that? And, and that's why. That's why these Edomites don't know you know who they are right that's why the guy at the beginning of the video went to petra right he probably wanted to go to petra because he had maybe a spiritual calling to go there man right that is if he is an edomite that is that it would be his ancestral homeland he may have lived there in in his reincarnation right if he was amongst that group but the point being is that is that uh you know now that the world is starting to wake up to who they are you know they're starting to realize who these caucasians are right they're realizing that they're the edomites and pretty soon these edomites aren't going to be able to you know walk around you know all uh unknowing about who you know they are right i'm pretty sure this guy's going to maybe see this video or he's going to eventually come across the information that caucasians are the edomites right uh, I know it's in certain, you know, biblical circles, though well, right now the the Christian community and the religious community, especially the Jewish community, try to, uh, uh, you know, bat it off as, as a racist remarks or, or a bunch of, uh, of lies, but they could only do that for so long because you see, eventually the, the scriptures are going to prove it, right? Because that's a great thing about prophecy, right, is that it basically cannot be uh, avoided, right? Prophecy is something that you can't run from. Let's read this. This is Habakkuk 2 and 6. 
Shall not all these take up a parable against him? Right? Him being the Edomites, right? These wicked people that rule the world right now. And a taunting proverb against him? And say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Right? That word clay there is a him, which is basically debt. Right? And that's how these Edomites live, man. All with heavy debt, right? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee, right? And that's what's happening, man. Us Israelites, we're waking up and we're vexing the hell out of these Edomites, man. So much so that they had to create a whole new uh, boogeyman, right? The BHI, the Black Hebrew Israelites, to come up against this truth, man. See, they're trying to defame us and make us seem like we're some sort of terrorist group or hate group when all we're doing is literally reading the Bible and we're telling it exactly, you know, reading the Bible exactly how it, you know, it's supposed to be read, right? But like uh, there's that famous saying from that movie 1984, it says, to speak truth in a time of universal deceit is a revolutionary act. And that's what we're doing, man. We're basically revealing the truth so much so and in such great numbers that these devils can't block us enough. They can't stop this message from going out because, yeah, they can stop it on YouTube a little bit, but they can't stop it on Twitter or they can't get it, stop it on Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, right? All these things are vexing these devils, right? Con continuing. And there shall be, and they shall be, and thou shall be for booties unto them. Booties mean like riches to be taken. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city and of all that dwell therein. Woe unto him that coveteth an evil covetousness and to his house, that he may set his nest on high Right, that's Esau, right, with his international space station, that he may be delivered from the power of evil, right? Because these devils think that they're going to be able to escape into space, go to Mars to escape the power of the Lord, man. But they can't, right? Because the Lord has revealed these Caucasians for who they truly are, right? That they, all of them, right, from the Americans, the Canadians, the English, the French, the the Swedish, the Australian, the New Zealanders, the Russians, all the Caucasians of the world, the Israelis, all of them, all of them are Edomites and they're all going to have to pay, uh, you know, according to the prophecies of the Bible, man, right? They've had their time to rule and now their entire world kingdom, right? The, the, the beast system is now going is now collapsing and being deconstructed by the Lord, right? All this economy imploding, all these things coming apart, though it may have been orchestrated by the elites at the top, trust me that it's all going to uh, fall apart and it's going to become out of control and they're not going to be able to uh, to rescue it, right? Or achieve their goal of the New World Order. So says the Bible. So hopefully this video was edifying. I'll give to the next time I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kokur, Dash, the ones of my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.